Hi guys, Pete here, N6QW, and we're looking at uh, one of the most uh, spectacular radios ever made, the Collins uh, KWM2, and of course the KWM2, which is more of a general purpose rig, as it has the extra band switch here, but uh, they're essentially the same except for uh, the KWM2 is handband only. Uh, truly a marvel of engineering, and uh, we're looking at a radio that's uh, 60 plus years old, Doing really good. This one uh, in particular does not have the AGC modification and um, it's a dramatic difference. The other KWM2 I have, I did make the uh, Service Bulletin 8 modification, but uh, bands don't seem too good today. But uh, we're here in the Midwest. It's early morning, uh, about uh, 7, between 7 and 7.30. I don't have my watch on. Those guys look for DX on 40. It's got some really nice features on it. It's upper sideband, lower sideband CW. Although the CW is kind of marginal because of the way in which they generate CW, they use a, a keyed tone. And the tone is 1350 hertz. And I guess that was to... Uh, satisfy the FCC with regard to spurs and um, not too good of a CW rig although people have operated successfully CW but it's more a sideband rig I can remember op operating my first uh, KWM2 when I was out on Midway Island the main station there uh, KM6BI was uh, dedicated to uh, phone patch operations because there was no phone lines off the island and um, we worked a lot of phone patches. It was a KWM2, a 30L1, a 3L would beam up at 150 feet, and that'll work the world. And uh, I can remember in 1964 when they had the Alaska earthquake, uh, the station KM6BI was a link between the Red Cross and uh, Washington, D.C. and Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, the circuits were not open between uh, Washington, D.C. and Alaska, but they were between Midway. And uh, I personally uh, handle a lot of traffic and uh, kind of scary when you get asked, you know, how many dead, how many killed, how many wounded. And really kind of interesting to, to be sitting there right on the uh, uh, forefront of things as history was being made. Uh, later when the band opened up, then they went direct from uh, Washington, D.C. to uh, Anchorage. Very nice radio. I got this one uh, really cheap. Uh, it was in really good uh, cosmetic condition. Uh, but it didn't work and uh, when it was described to me what didn't work I kind of knew what the problem was because I've seen this before on the other KWM2 it was a bad tube so one replaced one bad tube and uh, uh, subsequently uh, replaced two weak ones and uh, it does really nice I have converted this radio to operate on um, 17 meters you take the uh, 21.4 uh, megahertz band and pop a crystal in there and it'll cover me from 18 to 18.2 and I've made 17 meter contacts so kind of nice with an external adapter you could operate um, whisper and FT8 with this radio and it's a uh, pretty good uh, pretty good stability for a PTO that's 60 some years old so very nice indeed doesn't look like the guys K7HN up there in the Oregon is working much DX today typically you hear them working Africa and and Japan simultaneously kind of kind of cool to see what you can do with some pretty good equipment and uh, Some pretty big antennas, but this was the uh, uh, This was the uh, top of the line the uh, Icom 7850 or uh, the what is it the FT uh, DX 101 B or FT DX 3000 5000 of its day it cost about twelve hundred and fifty dollars in nineteen fifty nine. So you fast forward that and see if you are at the same uh, kind of price range as you're seeing the seventy eight fifty and and the uh, the ASU and the uh, Kenwood. So anyway, uh, nice radio.
one of the uh, interesting things about it is uh, to work on this radio, you, you turn it over and it's just jam-packed with wires and components. So uh, I've developed a little trick here. I uh, typically take some aluminum foil. If I got to unsolder something, and I just uh, make a make an aluminum foil dam around everything that you got that you don't want to touch with a soldering iron. This way, you don't have to worry about burning any wiring or any components. But uh, pretty pretty easy to uh, repair. Uh, stock resistors, uh, stock capacitors, and uh, tubes are readily available, so it makes it kind of nice. Get about uh, in excess of 100 watts out uh, on most bands, a little less on 10 meters. There you go, he's trying again. Again, the AGC mod would make a big difference on this, and I can... There you just jump frequency. Anyway, this is Pete, N6QW, one of the uh, radios of the golden era, the KWM2. I first saw it at about 1959. Put my hands on one in 63. And in 1959, when I uh, passed my general test, uh, when I was living outside of Pittsburgh, I went down to um, uh, the field office, because you used to have to take the general test at the field office. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't just uh, sit in a box top and get a tick, get an extra. So uh, I got my general license, and immediately after passing, I went down to a place called Camera Radio, which was an authorized Collins distributor there in, in uh, uh, Pittsburgh. And I was drooling over a KWM2, and I said, someday. Well, it took almost 30 years uh, for that someday to occur, because it was in the early 1990s that I got my, my first uh, KWM2, and actually I had KWM2, uh, two KWM 2As and a 75 S3B. So um, I, I made my dream come true, but it took a little while. I had to, had to get the kids out of the house first. It's in 2 GG Gill. They're in 155. They always hang out in that frequency. Rocco. Gill. NTGG uh, is in New Mexico, I think. Pete here, N6QW. Uh, I hope to be making a series of these videos with a lot of these old boat anchors, but this is probably one of the best. One, uh, one point of failure is this switch right here, which is the off-on switch. Uh, um, just the, uh, the surge through there uh, frequently will uh, do damage to that switch. So uh, the trick I use is I use a, uh, one of these uh, computer um, surge protectors. So I turn the surge protector off, put it in the on position, and then hit the surge protector. And that saves this switch because you can't find them. Up in Canada, BA6. Anyway, I do it. 
fond memories of the uh, Rosary and then the supervisor of the station for 17 years. I've had a very varied career. I uh, traveled with the Dodgers for 10 years before the station was so full of this to uh, not show Heat here in 6QW. Uh, my second KWM2 which uh, I acquired really cheap and uh, I you know you got one that's all you really need but I saw this one for sale on um, QTH.com and the guy was uh, literally giving it away because it didn't work and he didn't know what to what to do to fix it and he kind of explained what the problem I sent him an email and he sent, told me what the problem was and sent me some additional pictures so uh, the only thing that I've replaced on, on here as I said is three tubes one was uh, completely in op, the other two were kind of weak, and it had, didn't have decent feet, so I, I bought, spent 12 bucks and bought uh, feet that uh, match this so that it tilts the radio. So Pete here, N6QW, visiting with the, uh, it's a in the morning, uh, other bands are not too active. But you, you sure can, 